All right guys, this video is to follow up on the ladder diagram that we just watched on the two wire and three wire. So with these you can try and you can see that we've tried to make the wiring as clean as possible. So you can see the wiring harness is coming from the, the relay there. We have the limit switch here. And what we've done is we brought these to terminal blocks uh, just to save the actual components. So instead of replacing a relay base, we can in replace individual terminal blocks. Instead of replacing an entire limit switch, uh, if one of the terminals gets broken, then we can just replace one of these guys. Same thing goes for all of our push buttons. So there's our push buttons on our, our boards there. So you can see there that each of our different push buttons goes to a separate terminal block. And this one here is a, a lighted push button. So in addition to the normally open and normally closed, we have the transformer for the light in the front. If we take a look at uh, the starter, so here's our starter here. Okay, you can see that we should only be able to open this guy when the starter is in the off position. So I've just turned the starter on. I shouldn't be able to open that starter up. There should be no reason whatsoever that you need to open that up unless you're doing uh, live readings. Okay, in which case you need the appropriate PPE. Okay, so we're gonna turn this off. We're gonna open up the, the cabinet here and you can see that everything is fairly clean, right? Let's get a little zoom in here on our wiring. So this is our, our disconnect at the top there. Okay, you can see that <clears throat> we've brought in the, the terminals down to a breaker. Uh, again, we had issues. These are supposed to be three different fuses, but we put in a breaker there for overcurrent protection uh, just because students keep uh, blowing the fuses. So we found it was safer to go back to uh, a breaker. But out in the field, those are going to be fuses. Okay, down here we have a, a NEMA starter. Okay, and you can see that all of the terminals on the NEMA starter have again been brought out to terminal blocks. The only reason for that uh, is just because of, uh, for teaching purposes, as the, the students wire these guys up, uh, oftentimes the terminals are, uh, are stripped. And so rather than stripping the terminals on the actual starter, we have a number of different terminal blocks that we can wire to. So if one of those gets stripped, we can just replace a terminal block. Uh, we've put in an additional control fuse here. So you can see that my controls are coming off of line one over to that small one amp fuse and from there to my terminal block. So that's our little fuse there so that if you do uh, short out your control circuit, then the fuse will blow. Okay, let's take a look at uh, this, this NEMA starter here. So we have, uh, if we just pan up a touch here, you can see that uh, the terminals from the disconnect, again, these three terminals right here uh, should be going through three separate fuses. And then those wires are going to the top of our NEMA starter. So we here, here we have line one, line two, and line three. These conductors are larger than our control conductors these conductors are going to be carrying the current to our motor. So these have to be horsepower rated, whereas these are just controlling the current that's actually going to this coil right here. So you'll often find that the conductor is going to the top and eventually to the motor, right? If we pan down there, then the terminals on the bottom here, at the bottom of our overloads, there's line one, sorry, T1, T2, and T3 going to our motors. Okay, again, they're gonna be a larger gauge than the conductors that we're using for our controls. This uh, NEMA starter is a size zero. So you can see right here, the NEMAs are great in that they give you all of the information on the front face of the, the starter. Let's take a look at the, the voltage reading. If we pan in uh, just a little bit, then we can see that this voltage reading right here, uh, it's good for 200, 230 volts AC uh, for three horsepower and at uh, 380, 465, 75, this starter is good for five horsepower. So at a higher voltage, it's good for a higher horsepower. Now these horsepower ratings correspond to these terminals down here, or the ones at the top, line one, line two, and line three. Those are horsepower rated terminals. Okay, in addition to that, uh, let's see, the voltage on the coil. So this is crucial. There's our voltage right there, 28 volts at 60 hertz. Okay, so we gotta make sure that we provide 2.8 to there. Um, any higher voltage is gonna smoke that coil. Uh, any lower voltage, and it may not pull in. 
In addition to uh, our coil here with A1 and A2, we should have a normally open contact. So if we just pan back here, our normally open contact is mounted right here on the top. So this guy is uh, terminals three and two. Normally open contact is right here. Okay, there should be a normally closed contact as well. So this right here is our holding contact. There's a normally closed contact tucked right behind here that we can make use of. Below here we have our overloads. So these are our overloads relays. You can see that uh, right now they have not been tripped. If I pan in just a touch here, you'll be able to see that uh, when I trip the, the overload, then that little tab right there pops out. If I want to reset that overload, then I can press this push button right here. And if the solder here has cooled, then it will hold with the cam action and let it go and it should stay. Okay, so now it's been pressed in and I should have the current traveling through the overloads. Now the overloads are there uh, to make sure that you don't have to purchase a new motor if you put uh, too much mechanical tension on the shaft of the machine. Okay, below again we have T1, T2, and T3. Uh, and then just below that, so you can see it right here. Let me just drop this down just a touch here. So just below there, there is another terminal right here. And this contact right here is an, uh, a normally closed contact. It's actually uh, a normally open contact held closed. And this is our overload terminal right here. So if any of these heaters trip, then this terminal right here is going to open. Okay, let's take a meter and we'll make sure that everything is good before we start doing our project. We wanna make sure that no other student has smoked any of our components prior to actually wiring these guys up. All right guys, so you can see that uh, right now I'm in uh, the diode setting or continuity setting. If I put the two leads together, then you can hear it chirp. So you can either do it in continuity or you can do it in the ohm setting. The ohm setting will tell you, uh, you know, what the ohmic value is, but I'm just look, primarily looking to see whether I have continuity or not. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at that normally open contact on two and three. So I'm gonna put my meter leads uh, right there. Okay, you can just pan up and see that my meter leads are on this terminal two and terminal three. And right now I have an open. Okay, so that's good because that is a, a normally open contact. Let's just make sure that when we toggle the, uh, the actual contactor that it changes state. So to toggle the contactor, there's a, a window right here. Sorry, my hand went in there and we lost focus. Uh, so there's a little window right here. And by pressing in that with the screwdriver, then it should change the state of those contacts. So there you can see that we have continuity on two and three. If I let it go, it goes back to being an open contact and if I press this in simulating what would happen when I put power to the armature then all of a sudden you can see that those contacts change state. Excellent, those guys are good. Okay, once we've done that, um, I don't know, why don't we just take a look at uh, the coil. Now on the coil, again putting these two terminals together you can see that I have continuity. So I'm going to test between A1 and A2 and I have continuity, but you can see that I'm getting an ohmic value of 106 ohms there, right? Remember that it's a, it's a coil, so it's gonna have a higher impedance than uh, a standard contact. Let's take a look uh, again. Now an ohmic setting, and we'll see what the ohmic value is between these guys. Okay, so again, you're seeing 106, 107 ohms of resistance. And again, that's because there's a, a coil of wire there that's acting as our electromagnet. So on the contacts, you'll hear this. Sorry, in continuity. On the contacts, you're gonna hear this. Uh, but on the actual coil, we wanna see an ohmic value. We wanna see that the coils are actually there and somebody hasn't smoked them prior to us being there. Okay, let's check for uh, continuity between uh, the terminals of our overloads now. So we've got continuity here, continuity here, and again, continuity on line three. Okay, that's good. That just means that all of our terminals are um, cranked down. And again, if we want to test out uh, between line one and T1, if I can just hold this guy here, I may need to jam that in there. There we go. 
So that's looking at T1, I'm gonna look at line one. And again, I have no continuity, but I'm gonna to toggle that portion right here to simulate having a, the contactor energized. And we'll, we should have continuity as soon as I do that. There we go. So by toggling this, you can hear that I have continuity between line one and T1. Okay, let's move over to this guy at T2. Again, no continuity, but when I energize the contactor, there we've got continuity now. Beautiful. Okay, and let's look at line three and T3. So we'll jam our meter lead in there. We'll put our meter lead on line three. Again, we have an open, and when we toggle this contactor, we have continuity. Beautiful, everything's good there. Okay, uh, on the bottom, let's take a look at uh, our overload and we'll see whether it trips when I trip the overload. Okay, so you can hear that meter screaming at me. So I do have continuity on my overload contact. If any of these overload elements trip, so if I toggle this, you can see that it opens that contact. I'll reset it and I have continuity. If I trip my second overload here, then it becomes open. And by being open, it's gonna drop the, the current flowing to the coil. So it'll turn off the entire contactor. We've reset it again. I'm gonna trip my third overload. There we go, and now we've got an open which would stop current flowing to our coil right here. Excellent, okay. In addition to uh, our overload terminal, the last terminal that we wanna look at uh, would be the normally closed tucked in the back there. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so again, the meter is screaming at me. I've got continuity on my normally closed, which is good. And if I toggle this contactor here, I should have it open. There we go, now it's open. Okay, again, if we de-energize the contactor, the normally closed should go back to its shelf state. And there it is. So we've got continuity. When the contactor pulls in, it changes state. Excellent, so now we've gone through every different component that we have in this starter here. We've gone and looked at our normally open contact. We have looked at, so again, normally open contact is found right here. Uh, we've gone through next the coil to look for not only continuity but a resistance reading that is good. Then we looked at our overloads to make sure that all the terminals were cranked down and that they hadn't been tripped. We looked at line one to T1, line two to T2, line two, line three to T3, and then we toggled the contactor to make sure that everything was working properly. Uh, and then we went down to uh, the overload, and we tri tripped the overload, and we checked every single overload element there, and it opened that normally closed contact that's found on the bottom there. And then finally, we looked at the normally closed contact that's tucked right back there, uh, and it was normally closed at rest, and then when the contactor was energized, or when we simulated it being energized, then it changed state. All right guys, that's all our components in our starter. Uh, check out the next video. The next video is gonna go over uh, the two wire and the three wire wiring.